Every movie tells a story. Every story tells a tale. Come with us as the people behind the Cinemadness podcast talk candidly about the stories that connect them to their favorite movies. This is Real Stories from the Isles. Hey everybody and welcome to Cinemadness's Real Stories from the Isles. I'm Allison and I thought I would tell you a little story about a movie that is very near and dear to my heart. The movie is 1989's Shag. And I don't think a lot of people have seen or even heard of this movie before, Um, but it's a little gem. And I think uh, anybody, especially girls who like uh, Greece and those type of movies should run out and go see. So Shag is set in 1963 and it's basically a coming of age movie that surrounds four girls who just graduated high school in South Carolina. And they are going on a final summer fling to Myrtle beach because one of the girls played by Phoebe Cates is about to get married. So it's kind of like um, a female version of what was that silly movie where they got, oh, um, The Hangover, (laughs) except they're young. So this movie, again, it came out in 1989. So I went to the theater, I was nine years old, and I went to the theater with my best friend and her mom. And I think the reason why her mom went with us to this movie, because I remember her often just kind of dropping us off in a theater, and then she would go see another movie that was playing at the same time, if she didn't want to see the silly movie that we chose. But I think the reason why she wanted to stay and see this movie was because it looked really uh, nostalgic and fun and um, kind of like a, like a Grease type of movie, like a girly movie. So I think she thought it would be a good girl's day out. And we always went to the same theater. Prior to the movie, we would go eat at Ruby Tuesdays and my friend and I would always split the sampler platter, I guess that's what you called it, you know, with mozzarella sticks and potato skins and stuff like that. So I have very fond memories of doing that before going to see my movie. Um, Obviously at nine years old, I really didn't know what this movie was about. It just looked kind of fun. And I would pretty much go, I would pretty much have any reason to go to the mall and shop and go see a movie. So For those of you who don't know what the title means, um, shag, contrary to people's belief that it's something sexual, because that's what Austin Powers kind of made it into, um, shag is actually a form of ballroom dancing um, of beach music in the 50s and 60s. So it's not like one set dance, like the twist or something like that. But it was just overall what these kids did in the fifties and sixties in a like pavilion or ballroom setting. It was just their form of dancing, like break dancing. Um, So the whole movie was kind of set around this dance competition. Um, As I stated before, Phoebe Cates was one of the four girls, and I had only ever seen her in probably, I don't know, did Gremlins come out before then? Hmm. I'm sure Adam's rolling his eyes at me and like screaming when he's listening to this, what year Gremlins came out. But I want to say that I had only seen her in one other movie, and I'm assuming it would have been Gremlins because I don't think I would have seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High at eight or nine years old. So it's her. um, It stars Bridget Fonda, which, you know, this I think was one of her first roles. And I know for a fact I had never seen her before. Um, Another girl, which I completely forget her name, so she must have not done much. 
And then the lovely Annabeth Gish, uh, who you may know as Julia Roberts' um, younger sister in the delightful movie Mystic Pizza. So the four of them, they graduate high school and they go to Myrtle Beach for their last fling. Um, without going into, you know, a huge review of this movie, because that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, why I love it so much and my memories. I remember sitting in the theater and the credits started and it spelled out SHAG, S-H-A-G, like in big letters. And it was, that's how it started. It, it surrounded the entire screen of the movie theater. And behind each letter was the Confederate flag. So the letters spelled out the name of the movie, but in the background, it was, you know, the Confederate flag. And I'm like, uh, I don't, why is this like this? You know, I had only known the Confederate flag of being something obviously not so great, uh, even though I'm born and raised in Florida. I just always assumed it with racism. So I was like, what did we go see? Um, there was a lot of the Confederate flag in this movie. One of the scenes, Bridget Fonda does a talent show and it's a uh, bikini talent show. And she is in a Confederate flag bikini and <laughs> she prances around on stage with an American flag too. I, I think, I don't know. I kind of blocked that out of my mind. And I just, at this, that time, I just didn't understand really what the Confederate flag meant history wise. And, and I felt that um, maybe I shouldn't be watching this movie because maybe it was just talking about racism. Um, but that was the time frame. I mean, it was set in 1963. So, you know, as I got older, there's a lot of movies that are like that, that, you know, you feel a little uncomfortable with when you're watching, but, um, yeah, I just, I distinctly remember the beginning the opening scene of that movie. And I'm like, what is this? So everything else though, I just, I fell in love with the sets on this film. Um, all the big Southern plantation houses were beautiful and the strip uh, that on Myrtle Beach where the people would drive, you know, five miles an hour sitting on the back of their car with a convertible top down, you know, hooting and hollering at the girls and the guys. And it's just stuff like that, that you just, you know, I didn't have that. I didn't see that growing up, you know? Yeah. We drove around on the beach, but it was so hot. We, most of the time we had our windows up and the air blasting and I don't know, it's just, the time frame back then was just, it just seemed so innocent. Um, so I loved that. I, I loved seeing this pavilion where the shag contest took place. That was like the central focus of the movie that, you know, they would go dancing every night. And then at the end of the weekend, there was just going to be this huge shag contest. And I don't know, you probably won something like 300 bucks, who knows, but this movie just reminded me so much of my love for Greece. You know, the music, it's not a musical, but they had fun music and the hairstyles and the dresses. Like I just, I love, love, love that time frame. And I think that's why I fell in love with Mad Men. I just, I love the outfits. I love the hair. Um, I remember coming home from the movie and we tried to do hairstyles that were in the movie. And one of them was called the bubble flip. And I just got so mad because I have natural curly hair and a bubble flip has to be straight hair that flips out underneath. And I was like, Oh, this sucks. I'll never have a bubble flip. So I was just drawn from the get-go in this movie. Um, and then just like I would eventually do and probably every girl and woman did when they started watching sex in the city, the TV show, or if you just went straight into the movie, you, you focus on one of the girls, one of the main characters, and you see who you relate to the most. Um, who, who are you, you know, are you a Carrie? Are you a Samantha? Well, I remember doing that in this movie. I remember looking at the four main girls and saying, you know, who, who do I like the most? And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't based on looks or anything like that. It was just based on the personality and who I related to. And in this movie, it was um, Annabeth Gish who went by the nickname Pudge. And she was just so innocent. All she wanted to do was dance and, 
have somebody come up to her in the pavilion and ask if they wanted to dance. And she would just practice every night in the uh, house that they were staying at practice. She would practice shagging with this tie, this necktie. She would tie this necktie around the bed frame, the bed post, and she would use that as a guy's hand and, you know, jive back and forth, um, on the floor. And it was so cute. And I remember going home after the movie and doing the same thing. I went and got one of my dad's neckties and I tied it around my, um, canopy bed. And I was trying to, you know, twirl myself around and I fell numerous times because then, you know, the knot came out and it was just a hot, uncoordinated mess. But I think that's why I related to her. She was just so innocent and just so cute. And all she wanted to do was dance. And I, at that time, when I was nine years old, um, (laughs) my friend and I would go into different rooms and we would come up with dance routines and then meet back together in one room and show each other what we did. And that's what I did. I danced all the time. So for this movie, this, this new dance that I was learning, the shag dance, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I just, I just bonded a lot with my best friend who saw this with me. And, uh, it's just a good bonding movie with, with you and your girlfriends, you know, it was like, yeah, we're, we're going to be like them. You know, when we meet, when we go to high school and we graduate and we'll always be there for each other and have fun. And, um, I don't know, it's just a movie that we, we just loved together. And we still, to this day, quote this film, you know, there's a couple of different um, memorable quotes in this movie that are funny, funny, funny. And she's really the only one that I can quote this movie with because no one else has ever seen it. So that's kind of cute. And that makes me laugh that we um, we have that little you know bond with this film. I also made a Spotify playlist. Um obviously not after I saw this movie because there was no Spotify, but as I've watched this movie again and again, over the years, I made a Spotify playlist of all the sixties music that I fell in love with from the movie. And uh, this movie also taught me a lot of sixties slang like bubble flip. And, and um, (laughs) there was just a, a, a lot of stuff that they said that I don't know if some of it is even appropriate anymore. Um, but they would call JFK Jr. a sweet potato. They would say, oh, he's such a sweet potato. And I guess that meant he was super cute. And that's how I took it. But so I know ladies, if you want to tell guys that they are cute by saying they're sweet potatoes, that's let's bring some 60s slang back, shall we? Um, But ultimately this movie is just a comfort movie for me. It just um, brings me back to when I was nine or 10 years old, going to the movies in the summertime, uh, just an innocent film that, um, I bonded with over, you know, beach music and bubble flip hair. And, uh, I don't know. I just, I really love it. So I just remember that day in 1989 when I went to the movies and I will always, uh, be grateful for my friend's mom for taking us to see shag, even with the Confederate flag all over the place. So do yourself a favor. If you like Grease, if you like those type of girly 60s films, rent Shag. Uh, it's probably on Amazon, but watch it. It's a fun movie. It's very girly, very silly, but I love it. So um, thanks for letting me share my story with you. And uh, please subscribe so you get all of the Cinemanus hosts' real stories from the aisles. And uh, thanks for listening. Bye.